Welcome to Make Your Money Matter with Brad Barrett, the show that aims to change the way you think about wealth management. Brad is a certified financial advisor, established radio host, and author of Retire Right. He is a managing director and partner at One Capital Management, an SEC-registered investment advisory firm managing over $4 billion for clients across the nation. Brad and his team are dedicated to helping clients protect and preserve their assets so they can reach their investment and retirement goals. And now, your host of Make Your Money Matter, Brad Barrett. Welcome to Make Your Money Matter. I'm your host, Brad Barrett. I'm also a managing director and partner here at One Capital Management. I want to thank you for listening to the show today. Friends, today we're going to talk about the U.S. dollar and specifically what is going on with the U.S. dollar. You might have read headlines recently stating the world is you know, ditching the U.S. dollar or something to that extent. So we're going to talk about that today. But before we do, make sure to go to our website at onecapital.com. You can click on the media tab. There you can download and subscribe the Make Your Money Matter podcast. You can also download the podcast on any platform you would otherwise download, uh, whether it's Spotify or SoundCloud or the Apple iTunes app or Google Podcasts. Uh, leave us a review. It's always really great to hear your feedback. And with that, let's talk about this. So the world is ditching the U.S. dollar. That's kind of the headlines that have been going on the past, let's say, week or two. First question is this. Is it happening? Sort of, not exactly. And let me explain, okay? To understand, I think, what's going on with the U.S. dollar, we always have to look back on some things and understand how, I think, the United States, we, earned the title of, quote-unquote, the world's currency. So the U.S. dollar became the world's reserve currency thanks to the Bretton Woods Agreement of 1944. Many of you might remember this from U.S. history. Uh, we studied this in school. So what is that if you don't remember? So under this agreement, the U.S. dollar was crowned, again, quote-unquote, the world's reserve currency. And it was backed by the world's largest gold reserves, making it one of the world's strongest currencies. At that time, by the way, it was dethroning the U.K.'s pound sterling. Now, the agreement basically established a, a fixed exchange rate between individual countries and their central bank currencies and the dollar because the dollar was already backed by gold and deemed quote unquote stable, hence the dollar's nickname, the gold standard. You can see where that's coming from, right? So the US dollar, as many of us saw, stopped being linked to gold in 1971, which by the way, I spoke about a couple weeks ago when I talked about cash and how to look at certain things. And we saw this because President Nixon announced that the US would no longer convert dollars to gold at a fixed value in the efforts to curb inflation at that time. Obviously, I'm oversimplifying this here, but I want to kind of get the gist across. But needless to say, the U.S. dollar has remained the world's reserve currency, meaning that countries keep large amounts of U.S. dollars on hand to use for international trade and transactions. That's the whole premise of the world's currency or the greenback being the world's currency. Now, Again, as you've likely heard, there's some countries like what they call, they're now calling this wonderful you know, acronym of BRIC. It stands for Brazil, Russia, India, and China. They've quote unquote expressed interest in moving away from the US dollar for international trade and transactions. Friends, I wanna share this loud and clear. This is nothing new, okay? What we're seeing here is media out there in our social media worlds, our websites, obviously with the news, I think everything going on with Trump and all that kind of stuff and his quotes on all this, this isn't anything new. And let me bring you back 13 years ago, okay? 2010, BRICS announced plans to create, at that time, if you recall, the quote-unquote NDB, the New Development Bank, which would provide essentially an alternative to the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, uh, and the institutions that have historically been dominated by the U.S. and other Western countries. So again, nothing new. Now, despite this slow shift here, the U.S. dollar right now still accounts for over 60% of global foreign exchange reserves and remains really, if you look at it, the dominant currency in all international trade and finance. Now, given all of that, to me, and this is an opinion right now, obviously, I never say never and you want to look through this. And we, what I want to share here with the, the podcast today is we are looking through this as a firm at One Capital. We are obviously cognizant of the news reports and the news, but again, our job is to filter it, right? Remember, nothing new. This has happened before. So this is just new topical information that's kind of coming to light, if you will. But again, it, it still remains the dominant currency, international trade and finance. And given all that, it's unlikely that it will be displaced, in my opinion, in the near 
future. By the way, second place to this, just so to frame a reference here, is the euro, and that's at 20% of global exchange reserves. You can see there's a lot of, there's a far move here to make this move. So the next question I think that I've, I've, I've seen, or likely if you're listening here and, and, and you're, you're thinking through this, like what happens if the US dollar is no longer the primary reserve currency? And it's a good question. And there's been articles written on this before. I'm sure you can look it up. Many of you might have researched this, but if, and if, if, if here, the US dollar were to lose its status as the world's primary reserve currency, it could have, I'll be completely frank, as we all know, it could have significant impacts on the broader global economy. But before this happens, remember this, countries would need to find an alternative reserve currency, which would really and could lead to a shift towards other currencies, things like the euro, the yuan, uh, or maybe even a new global currency. I mean, there, there's a whole lot of discussions out there in this if world, okay? Stay connected. Get frequent updates on the show. Follow Brad Barrett and Make Your Money Matter on most social media platforms. And catch full episodes of Make Your Money Matter streaming now on our YouTube channel. To schedule your no-obligation appointment, go to OneCapital.com or call 805-410-5454. Real quick, just to understand economics for a second, I think it's important to bring this to light as to why this, why I understand this is an important topic, but also I want to share some thoughts going back in history here, reminding everyone that this hasn't happened, this has happened before, you know, this isn't new necessarily, but here's how it works if this were to happen, okay? Just so you can get a, an idea of what we want to do. And then, and then ultimately I'm going to touch on here before we end today of how a good portfolio manager or, or how a diversified portfolio can actually help mitigate some of these fears in the if category, okay? So here's the thing. In economics, if there's a decline in the demand for US dollars, what happens is it could diminish the dollar's value, which really leads to things like making imports more expensive. It makes US government borrowing more expensive. It diminishes, obviously, the, the US influence in the, again, the broader global economy. It also can increase, uh, potentially lead to higher inflation in the US. So those are obviously some of the concerns if there were a decline in demand for US dollars. Now, the thing I wanna end on here, it's a short and sweet one today, okay, is to combat that. How do we adjust for this if this were to happen? And if you're sitting there right now saying, Brad, I hear you. I know it's happened before. And, you know, obviously there's a big, a, you know, big long road to get there. But I think it's going to happen. Okay, well, here's the thing. To combat this, you want to make sure you invest not only in the U.S. Okay, you want to make sure. And by the way, not just you and S in general. I'm just saying U.S. based companies. You also want to have international companies as well. Own the world, friends. I mean, that's the idea here. Diversification, and I say this a lot to our clients, right? We're, we live in a big, bad world, whether we like it or not. So having international exposure, having domestic exposure, understanding your sectors, your industries within your portfolio, everything from large capitalized companies to middle-sized companies to small and micro, emerging markets, mixing that in with some fixed income and some bonds that are both domestic and international potentially, laddering those bonds so you don't get affected by interest rates and things like that. That's a broad stroke into a portfolio manager's job. And for anyone out there, if you're working with an advisor or if you're working with us, understand that's what we here at One Capital are doing for our portfolios. And I share today's topic simply to say this, I understand in the past week it's been of note and in the headlines, but a couple things to summarize, right? We've seen this before. We saw it in 2010. The BRICS countries got together and had the same thing for the NDB. They obviously didn't happen, right? And the road to this is a very long one, okay? So it's not just going to happen overnight. And even if it does happen, I mentioned some of the things economically that could happen, but again, you can diversify through that. Now, I know for many that sounds like, oh, that just sounds too simple, but it's worked. Look at true and tested portfolio management over different decades, different time periods. Now, as always, past performance doesn't reflect future gains here, but the idea is to stay diversified, keep rebalancing, have active management. And if you're not doing that, that's really, this might be the kicker, not to run away for the hills and put all your money under a mattress. I'm not saying that's for you or not for you, but I'm just saying that might be the inner voice saying, you probably want to talk to someone about this, making sure your retirement plan is aligned with some of the ifs that you might think might happen in this world or align yourself if it doesn't happen and making sure that you're still growing your assets, protecting your assets, both while you're working and then ultimately in retirement. So as I shared, it's a short and sweet one today. I really wanted to focus on the, the topics that I know have been coming up and address those as we try to do here on the weekly podcast. I want to thank you for listening to the Make Your Money Matter show. As always, before 
acting on anything discussed today, speak with a financial advisor near you about your specific situation. Or again, if you'd like our help, you can reach us at 805-410-5454. And until next week, always remember, make your money matter. The information in this show is educational and general in nature and does not take into consideration a listener's personal circumstances. Therefore, it is not intended to be a substitute for specific individualized financial, legal, or tax advice. To determine which strategies or investments may be suitable for you, consult the appropriate qualified professional prior to making a final decision.